thanks so much for joining me. Today we are trying out some brand new Hermes products. If you saw the community tab, you may have noticed that a few new items from Hermes were available via Selfridges. Although it wasn't just like click and purchase. You have to go to the item, like it, sign out of your account, sign back into your account, move the item from your wish list to your shopping cart and then purchase it. I don't know why it was that way. And in fact, I just tried to click on those links and they weren't live and I don't see them anywhere on the Selfridges site. I'm sure that will change. And if you're seeing this later, they may be more widely available. So for now, if you're interested, just keep an eye out, but I don't know really how much you'll want these because I've got some thoughts around each of the items. Let me just tell you what I have here. I have the Natural Enhancing Complexion Balm. I also have the Radiant Matte Powder, this one. And I have the Glow Powder, this one right here. One other thing I noticed was Selfridges had a really high import duty on these powders. Um, so it was like, I posted it how much it was, but it was a lot. It was a lot more than what I normally pay. I don't think I've paid that much in duties in the past. So I don't know what was up with this or if that's a new thing or what's going on, but just be aware when you purchase these from Selfridges, it may look like an extra amount was added on, which it was for me. In my mind, as I was waiting for these products to come in, I kept asking, is this gonna be worth it? Is it going to be worth the extra steps to order, which was very strange. Is it worth the extra duty? And these are luxury beauty, so they come with a luxury beauty price anyway. So I'll give you my thoughts on if I thought this was worth it at the end. So I'm just reading on the Hermes site what it says about this. Beauty embraces the open air with a natural enhancing complexion balm. It elevates the skin with a weightless veil of sheer color and a radiant natural finish that lasts for an impeccable eight hours. I won't wear it for eight hours because it's evening now, but I will definitely test it later, but we'll see how it goes. The complexion becomes instantly even and translucent. Skin is hydrated, enhanced, and protected. Okay, it says it's got adjustable coverage with each of the 12 translucent shades in the range adapting to two or three skin tones. Okay, so when I swatched this, I thought it was too light, but maybe it'll work. It does have a fragrance. Um, it blends the delicacy of Arnica with sandalwood and green tea. Okay, so this shade is described as medium beige with golden warm, which should be my shade. It's shade 40. It says to add to forehead, temples, cheekbones, chin, and gently blend. Forehead temples, where else? Cheekbones, chin, and gently blend all over the face. Okay, this looks really light, like I thought it would, but it deepened up as I let it kind of settle in, so let's see. It does have a fragrance. I mean, yeah, it does have fragrance, although it smells a little bit like, like sunscreen. It looks like sunscreen, doesn't it? Oh no. Okay, let's give it a chance here. Okay, it's, does this have SPF? Oh, it does. Okay, so now you know how that looks. That does not look good, does it? It looks like I'm wearing sunscreen. Although, like I said, in real life, it's not, it doesn't look like that. Like if you could see in the mirror what I see, can I, can we do that? And you're not seeing, well, are you? I don't know. I don't know how to show you this, but I'm not seeing what the camera is seeing because I'm looking in the viewfinder. And so let's let that settle in for a moment and see what happens because when I swatched on my arm, it dried down to a deeper shade. So let's give it a second. While we do that, let's do the eyes and then we'll kind of go in a out of order a little bit. So we'll go in with primer. It does have a nice texture to it. I like that it dries down, like it's dried down nicely, but it has a dewiness to it. It's not totally dried down, um, but I'm gonna do an eyeliner here. Let's go with another Victoria Beckham liner because that was such a fun look to do with the liner and then just an eyeshadow. So we'll do something similar, but we're gonna go in with Ash today. It's a beautiful grayish shade, grayish shade. I'm gonna go under just so you can see the color again. I'm gonna go on the waterline and under, same technique. And it can be kind of like, kind of messy, which is what I like about it. Going up to make a little bit of a, help me with the direction of that wing. 
And then I just tight lined with that as well. Yeah, so the foundation's adjusting a bit, not totally. Let's go in with Elephant. I'm gonna take this Shade and Sweet brush by Shantikai. But I'm gonna add some eyebrows and mascara, and then let's see what color this turned into. I don't know if that helped, that did not help. Okay, uh, let's take a look at just the quality of it. So it claims that it's a melting and enveloping texture which smooths softly into every contour of the face. Um, yeah, I mean, it does that. I don't think it does any favors to any texture on my face though, and I don't usually have like texture that shows. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I feel like if you have any texture, it's gonna just, because it has this glow to it, it's gonna emphasize that. So I think this is for like really, really smooth skin. Yeah, it's not doing any favors to my enlarged pores in the front. It has that like a shinier kind of appearance, even though it's dried down. Let's go with concealer and see if we can fix this. Um, I do have another idea, but maybe we can do it just to the forehead. Let's try it. I wanna mix a little bit with the Golden by Victoria Beckham, because maybe, I don't know. I don't know what I'm hoping. Let's see if we can get the forehead at least to look not so stark a little bit. So this is the difference between the two shades. Yeah, I feel like you have to have really, really nice skin for this product. I mean, I like that it has SPF. I really like that. I don't think I put enough of that Golden in there, did I? It's a little disappointing and let's go in, I'm gonna conceal as usual. So sizzly under the eye. This might be hard to believe, but I looked, I just looked in the mirror cause I had to get something from the bathroom, but it looks like my skin tone. It now looks translucent in the mirror. Not as quite translucent here. I think it is that it's cause it's a mineral SPF that's bouncing the light. So that's why you see that white cast, but okay, this is getting a little bit better. Actually, let's see, can we build this? I don't know, I'm afraid to build this up now because it's just gonna look, I don't know, like the wrong shade. Hmm. Yeah, not great building up on top of textured areas. It's bringing about more texture. So I'm gonna stay away from that. Let's go in though with clay de po and see how that goes. Okay, so there it is concealed. So see, it starts to look a little okay. Like not totally off once I get that concealed. Let's get the other side. Okay, so it doesn't look so so bad once concealer's on. Let's just keep going and see how the overall look is. Let's go in with the powder, this one. I'm gonna use this brush, this Rowan powder brush first and just see what happens. Okay, actually, that is nice and translucent, isn't it? Forehead. It's reminding me a little bit of the Chantecai Perfect Glare Powder, the way that it appears. It perfects the texture a little bit as well, like that one. So this is a first impression, but I wonder if those of you who like the idea of the Perfect Blur Powder by Chantecai, but it's still too much color for you, and you have a lighter skin tone, this might be something interesting for you. I'm not seeing anything radiant though. I mean, I'm seeing like a, smoothing effect. But I don't see a, like it said radiant matte, I don't see that. Which <laughs> I don't think I need that right now because the other product had a radiance to it that I didn't actually like. Okay, this is promising, the powder. Nice. I'm pretty picky when it comes to powders as well. And this brush was really nice with it too. I didn't use the, the typical one I would use because I wasn't sure 
it, if it would put on too much. So I went with another powder brush. And this Rowan Everything Powder Brush, brush Everything Powder Brush worked nicely. Okay, it does have a radiance. I'm looking at the viewfinder. The light is not sparkly or anything like that. That's not what it is. It's more of like the texture of it that is reflecting the light, like skin would reflect the light. Bronzer, I'm gonna bronze with the Sizzly Bronzer. Sonia G brush, I love this brush. Bronzer is gonna fix a lot of what went wrong with this in terms of the shade. There is one thing I'm noticing about this powder though. Because I have concealer underneath and darkness, it doesn't color correct. So it does have the potential to make this look a little bit less perfected for me, at least in the front. So if you're not worrying about color correcting or anything like that, I think it's a really pretty texture. Let me look at it right now um, after a few minutes. Yeah, it does have a smoothing effect, but I'll have to try this like several times to really get a handle on it, but that's my first impression. If you have though discoloration, I would stick to something like the, not something like that, I would stick to the Perfect Blur Powder by Shantikai just because it does have that beautiful color correcting aspect to it. Oh, let's do blush. So I'm gonna go in with an Hermes blush. This is Rose Pomette. The blush applies really beautifully on top of that powder though. Let's do that trick where I diffuse the blush a little bit with that blur powder, but we'll use this one instead, the uh, Radiant Matte. Pretty, and it does have like a slightly I know it says translucent, but there's slightly a cooler tone to this, just a hint of it. Let's go in with number 21 first, the lip shade, one of my very favorite ones. Before we go to the other powder, this one that I just used, it says, Beauty embraces the open air with radiant, with the radiant matte powder, a soft silky finishing powder that mattifies the complexion with a translucent glow. The shade is universal. So it was quite translucent, but there's still like a hint of that cool white tone in there. I think I can, I mean, I can see it. I think you could probably see it as well. Plus that other product underneath probably isn't helping with the mineral SPF underneath. You can also remove this, it says, and refill it. Refills are sold separately. So for this powder, the glow one, it says, beauty embraces the open air with a radiant glow powder, a fine silky powder that enhances the complexion with luminous radiance. Its golden pink shade is universal. This illuminator is applied to specific areas of the face. So not all, all, not all over the face, like I initially thought. So it says to use it strategically, pretty much. The formula contains emollients for long lasting softness and comfort as well. You can also refill this one with refills. I haven't seen them yet, but it says you can. So it says to apply to bare skin or after the complexion balm with fingers or the Rose Hermes blush brush, which I don't have to illuminate the cheekbones, temples, bridge of the nose, and Cupid's bow. I'm gonna use my Wayne Goss brush. So it's got a nice light application. I wanna say it's actually better applied with hands it's a little more even. The little texture emphasizing. I don't know if you can tell from there. Let me just look again. Yeah. If you have texture, maybe not something you're gonna love. So let's talk about this product. Typically I can get a product to work pretty well, um, but I just wasn't impressed with the way this made my skin look. It seems like a pretty simple product and it shouldn't bring out texture. It should just be a nice kind of evening out kind of product with some SPF. But I noticed it had a glow to it that 
emphasized texture. And granted, my skin is dry right now, so that is something that's a little bit atypical compared to how my skin normally behaves. But I noticed it didn't do any favors to textured or dry skin. So if you have either of those, this might not be the product that you wanna pick up. I think this might be better for skin that's quite smooth, where the texture is quite even. Uh, I will try this in the summer as well. In fact, I'll probably just use it as an SPF under foundation anyway, just because I like having SPF. And this is a mineral SPF, which I do like about that. I like mineral SPFs. I did need to add all of the other things on, like concealers to make it look good. And in the end, I didn't add anything to correct the color or make it deeper. I just use bronzer like I normally do. That usually helps blush as well. So I do wonder if a deeper shade would have been too deep because now it doesn't look too light. Yeah, it's hard to tell, so that's why I err on the side of lighter. But right here, it looks like the right shade. Looking at it in person, looks like the right shade. So for me, this was not worth it, simply because it wasn't this amazing product that I can't live without. It's okay. It didn't make my skin look any better. I think that's what I came up with. It just added SPF and it was okay. It smelled a little bit like, like I said, sunscreen, which I didn't even think about it having sunscreen. Yeah, there's something in there that smells just like regular sunscreen. I know there's a fragrance in there, but that was my initial thought. I would say this was not worth all of the extra time, effort, and expense. Yeah, that was a little disappointing. This product's interesting. Like I said, if you like the idea of the Chantecaille Perfect Blur Powder, but the light medium is still too much color for you, this might be interesting. Or if you have a cooler skin tone, it looks really nice. I prefer the Shantikai just because of that color correcting aspect. Where now that it's been on for a little bit, it's not as smooth as when I initially applied it. But I'll have to try this over and over again, just like I use that Shantikai product every day. That's how I know it so well. This is an initial impression. It does remind me of it. But like I said, if you have lighter skin tones, this might be an interesting one for you to try. If you have a darker skin tone, I don't know, any darker than me, even though it says translucent, I don't know. I don't know how it's gonna work. Yeah, if you have any deeper skin tone, let me know if you picked it up and if it works for you, because I'm questioning a little bit how translucent it really will be if you have a deeper skin tone. But I liked the texture, I liked the performance, but time will tell. I would have preferred to pick this up without the extra tax. I think that's what I would have preferred um, on this one. This is not one that I feel like, oh yeah, well that was worth the extra. I think it was $17. And that's above the actual price. I think it was 17. Don't quote me on that, but it was a lot. When did I drop this? Okay, this tells you how soft it is. Okay, well, that's okay, because I don't love this one. Anyway, this shows you how soft it is. So I dropped it on the carpet. I did not drop it on a, on a floor that's hard. So here, let me show you. There. Oh no, so let me see if I can just push it together. When I first read you could apply this with clean hands, clean fingers, I thought that was kind of strange, but actually it applied better that way. It was more even, like it had started its life as a liquid highlighter, that kind of effect, versus with a brush. It was a little too dispersed, and I think the reflective particles are a bit large, so having them far apart looks more sparkly than anything else, so applying with clean hands actually made it look better. And it looks okay here, I guess, but it does bring about texture. But again, my skin is very oddly dry, so that might have something to do with it, why things are not going as well as they usually do. But to me, oh look, I just pushed it together and it looks so much better. That's how soft this is, if that gives you any indication of how not powdery this is. It's not powdery, let me show you. I was able to just push that together. Interesting texture on this. I also don't think this was worth it. The extra steps to order as well as the extra tax on top. Was this whole order worth it? I'm gonna say no, there was nothing in here that was like, ooh, I'm so glad I did all the extra things to get this and pay extra money to get it. This one though has, is promising. This just threw it. Wow. This is promising though. We'll see how it goes over time. I will continue to use them. First impression then I'm going to say isn't worth all of the extra things that went into obtaining these products. But like I said, I will continue to test them, see if I change my mind. But I think my expectations were really high anyway. So that might have something to do with it. And then my skin right now is extra dry. So 
that may have been a factor as well. But stay tuned, I will continue to test them in the background, give you some updates, let you know if I change my mind. But right now I wouldn't run out and get anything per se. The only thing maybe that's interesting here is the uh, Radiant Matte Powder if you are lighter in skin tone or cooler in skin tone. Let me know if you pick these up, what you thought, if you like them, what your skin type's like, things like that. I'd love to know because I think that will make a difference. So just because these didn't work for me today doesn't mean they won't work in the future or that they won't work really well for somebody else. I'd love to know your thoughts. But that's it for today's video, so please take care of each other. Stay well if you enjoyed this video. If you learned something, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and I will see you next time.